If you are looking for a new dining out experience, there's a brand new restaurant coming soon to North Scottsdale. Meet executive chef Brian Fierstein. He's from Union Barrel House and he is making some dishes from the menu. PB and J. Okay, you're thinking peanut butter and jelly. No, 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 no. Pear, brie, and jam. I am so excited to so get started. And you guys are opening up in January. Absolutely. And we're actually in Old Town Scottsdale, not North Scottsdale. Okay, so Old we're, Town. we are going to be located in the building that is currently occupied by the Salty Senorita, which is moving up the street. Nice. So nice. we've already started some of our bacon prior to uh, coming on, but one tip that would be great if you are going to be cutting bacon is to put it in the freezer for 15 minutes prior to uh, cutting it up. It just makes it so your knife goes through without, you know, sometimes you cut bacon, it kind of slides right, around, right, right, right. makes it kind of hard. So if you just pop it in the freezer for, you know, 15 minutes or so, it makes it a lot easier. So tell too. us about this menu at Union So House. we feature modern Americana. So it's going to be our take on modern, you know, American twist on American food with um, great craft beer. We have five beers that are going to be um, brewed for us locally and then 36 taps with a lot nice. of great, um, you know, microbreweries and daily changing taps that have a lot of, you know, very beer centric type beers. So we have our bacon rendering. You want to start your pan out cold. You don't want to start bacon in a really hot pan because it sears the bacon. You want to uh, start it on a, over low heat to let all of the bacon fat kind of start to render out. And I would cook this a little bit longer than we're going to do before we add the onions in. You really want all of the fat to come out and to get kind of crisp. Mm -hmm. um, but for the sake of us being on TV, we're going to go ahead and add in some diced onions. And again, you're going to want to let these start to sweat out and you smell, you know, if you could smell it at home, oh, you could definitely great. smell yes. um, all of this great, you know, bacon smokiness and then the sweetness of the onions starts to come out. That's really good to know about the pan because, you know, we have a tendency to put things in a hot, you know, skillet. Yeah, and I mean, that's, you know, to. one thing, it, you know, when you're cooking, it doesn't always have to be the right. screaming hot pan. If you're searing, you know, meat or something along those lines, you definitely want a hot pan. But when you have something that has a lot of fat in it, like bacon, you mm -hmm. want to start it over a lower heat to let all of that fat render out. While that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and start our pears okay. for our, the pear element of this and pears are in season right now, so you're just going to take a, a pear, make sure it's washed, and you want to cut it into about quarter inch thick slices. Mm -hmm. And we're going to poach it in red wine. Pick something you know that you would drink, but not something crazy expensive because we're just <laughs> poaching pears in it. Right. Um, but you definitely don't want to buy cooking wine, you know, on the aisle where where there's cooking so you wine because just it's, go to the store. Okay, we're going to use this. Yeah, just just whatever you know you whatever normally you like. whatever you normally drink is fine. You know, okay. if it, but the cooking wine, if you buy it on the cooking aisle, it usually has salt added into mm -hmm. it. Really doesn't um, help out with with that. So we're just going to add our wine into the pears. And we have about a minute. So Which is perfect. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and add in a little bit of cloves and then a cinnamon stick. I like to use cinnamon sticks versus ground cinnamon. It's a whole spice versus using something that's already ground up. You never know how long stuff like this has been sitting in the little tin. So take your cinnamon and just break it up. And you can start to smell all of that Gosh, all really the, great. The, the aroma in this kitchen, oh my goodness. So you get that, you know, oh, fall yeah. fall smell, and really the the pears in our PB and J are what's going to add the acidity to cut mm -hmm. through the brie, which is the butter, the, the peanut butter that we use. And so we will end up with, once it's cooked, a jam. It's essentially a jam. We're going to add brown sugar into our pot, mm -hmm. and that's going to come in. A little that. bit of red wine vinegar, and then a little maple syrup, which adds another little sweetness. And you're going to cook this down okay. till it becomes almost syrupy. And then cool it for a few minutes, and then you're going to put it into the food processor, and you end up with this. Well, I tell you what, Chef Brian is just getting started. He is with us for the entire hour. You're going to be making a tasty grilled cheese with arugula coming up. Absolutely. But we're going to finish this as well. So we're going to be taste testing in just a bit. I wish you, we always talk about smell-o-vision, Terry. I know. It is insane in this kitchen right now. 